Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Today, back into Gary Grigsby's War in the East 2, this is our Let's Play against the Soviet AI. And we are about to turn the turn, uh, we're getting late into January of 1943, wow, we almost said 1942, it's 1943, and Sarge the Rager is here. Yes, it is the most exciting part, Sarge. Hi, John Chapel. How are you? Paul Paul Sanders is here. Uh, David Bartello. Tim. Hello, Tim. How are you? Uh, thanks for dropping by. It's Friday afternoon, where I am anyway, probably Friday evening where you are. And we're playing a Grigsby game. What could get better than that? Uh, what else is going on? Well, we finished up our Ardennes offensive uh, initial scenario Went over that one. We'll see uh, when I play the grand scenario or the grand campaign there. Uh, we may, I may divert quickly to war in the West, but I don't want to get some of you too excited uh, until I'm sure about that. I know there's some people that love, like Salty Dodger. He loves those war in the West videos for good reason. That's a great game, just like these other games. But uh, until Gary Grigsby puts me in his will, uh, I can't just play Gary Grigsby games. Uh, you may see I put up a video for Distant Worlds 2. I'm working on more videos of that. It's kind of a odd situation because it's not even the preview version. It's the beta version, you know, so it's not finished. Uh, there's only two of the different races that you can play right now, or at least that they want us to play. They're not fully fleshed out. And so... I can't really make a tutorial. I don't, or at least I don't want to make a tutorial for that until the game's finished. Uh, so I'm kind of going through it, and it's a quasi, you know, I'm showing you all the features. How about that? Paul says it's 20 degrees. Well, I know I had some friends that were sending me pictures from Chicago. Um, I still have a lot of people I grew up with and whatnot that uh, live in the Chicago area. And they were showing Lake Michigan, and it was just all frozen over, and it was like 9 degrees there or whatever. And people were like, well, do you miss it? And I said, eh, I don't know. I think it's 72 today, maybe. Sun's out. Uh, Pacific looks nice. <laughs> no, I don't miss it. No, well, sometimes. Chicago's a great city, despite uh, the reputation for violence. Uh, I, I loved that town, but... You know, the weather. You get older, the weather means more to you. What's up, Big Head Valley? Good to see you. All right, let's play the game. What do you say? We're going to turn the turn, so we got to get moving. Uh, Northern Michigan, Sarge. Now, it gets real cold up there. I've been to the UP before. I went up and saw the Mackinac Bridge, ate some fudge. I, I've done it. I've done it. Hey, bananas. All right, I got to just say bananas. It always makes me happy. Um, well, what do we need to do? I'm going to check the commands one more time. And I know that that is the most exciting thing we do, so you guys will all be happy about that. But I do not want a turn to happen without these commands all locked in. Now, I did make a mistake. I put the wrong division in here in 23rd Corps, but we're going to live with it for a turn. Oh, I do remember something else I wanted to do here. And that's attack. Let's attack if we can. I wanted to attack right in this area. Now, the infantry is not in great shape. 52 and 57 there on the TOE. For the 102nd, we've got 48 and 54. We've got this nice mech unit here. Uh, as a matter of fact, we need to take that off reserve. And I wanted to try to blow out one of these units just for fun, if nothing else. I'm going to take Totenkopf and the infantry that's in the best shape. And let's do a, ooh, he's really in the best shape, I guess. Well, let's take that out, put that on, um, and try to blow this unit the heck out of here, and then maybe turn and do the same to that one. Can we get it out of there? 1 to 1.4. Now, we do do some real damage. It was 3 to 1 losses there. Uh, now then, let's take this one and Totenkopf and go after this guy and try to blow him out of there. All right, we knock him back. All told, we cause about 2,000 casualties there. 249, 5, and 10. Uh, he does lose some AFVs, some guns, a few planes. Okay, well, that wasn't quite as exciting as I wanted it to be. The other thing I wanted to do before we turn is just tip 
do not leave Panzer divisions out here on their own like this. Um, especially when the Soviets are ascendant, because they will descend on this and cause some hurt. So I was looking at the map before we started here, and I just want to kind of look in this area and see what we had going on. And I realized that we can take this, so we've got a okay division here. Uh, he doesn't have enough food, but I think he will get refooded this time. So I want to take the other division, this division with 8,000, and scoot it back one, all right? I think we'll be okay. He's at the tip of the spear. I get that, but he's a pretty decent unit for what we've got now. But we've got two units here that actually have, you know, a good amount of men uh, and material. Uh, well, I say a good amount. They're at half strength. That's pretty good for us now, right? 50 on the TOE and 50. Oh, okay. Did I hit the same? Nope. They just both happen to have 50. All right. This guy, though, I wanted to go out here and set down with this Panzer division so that he doesn't just get uh, attacked individually by all of these units because the, the Soviet AI will go after that, uh, certainly. Then I was going to take the other guy. So right up here, I have a Panzer division and a motorized. Motorized is pretty strong. That could probably hold. This one's at 91 and uh, what I think I'm going to do, though, is move it up here. And another reason I'm going to do that is if we are going to bust through here next time, we want to have some infantry out here to hold the gap, right? So I'm going to move those out there. Uh, Von Monstein, I actually can't move him anymore. Okay. Uh, Walt Weiss in 6th Corps has got 8 of 9. This unit, 7th Corps, we do have something out of command. Now, I thought you guys were going to yell at me for that. Uh, we've got a Panzer... Oh, that's right. Okay. This Panzer Command, who is this? That's Volkers. He's 765 with 7 on infantry. So even though it's called a Panzer Corps, he's leading infantry and he's a better infantry general. Then we had the have the very handsome... Gustav Fenn here, 755 and 6. Uh, I don't really like that. So what we're going to do is move Gustav Fenn over here. Who else? Okay, so we have Weiss, but a lot of Weiss's guys are back here. But he's too good of a general to sideline. He's 877 and 8. So I'm going to take these infantry divisions, I just moved over here, and give them to Walt Weiss. And I'm going to give the ones that are going back back to the reserves, at least for a turn, to one Gustav Fenn. Uh, well, let's look at these again. 7556. 7657. Okay, well, we want to keep Volkers out here then. Um, and indeed, it will be the aforementioned Gustav Fenn that comes over here. He is 7th Corps. Let's put these guys in 7th Corps. Now, you may say, what's the point of even putting them in command if you're going to send them back to the reserves? Well, this time, uh, they may get extra stuff just because he can pass the dice roll for them. Um, and so we may as well have them in command. You know, his the administrative dice rolls and whatnot uh, could become important. Now, he has also got some units over here. Uh, but we may give those to Walt Weiss as well. Now he's down to four of nine. He's got the unit underneath him. We'll put that on seventh. Seventh core. All right. And then he's got one more. Where is it? It's over here under this stack. Uh, we could... Ah, Theobald Lieb. What's up, my brother? Uh, <laughs> brother from another mother. Uh, let's... He's, well... We don't need to do that. Let's put this in 20th core. So there we go. All right. Now then, this infantry and this infantry will put all under Walt Weiss. So he's at 0 of 9. They all need to go into 6th core then. So let's put that guy into 6th core. Okay. And we'll put this guy into 6th core. And we'll put these guys into 6th Corps. 
Excellent. And this guy, the last one, six score. And they should all be in command. Weiss, Weiss has got the calm. Uh, he could scoot out here, but why? That all looks good. Let's make sure all of these guys go back to Von Manstein. Okay. Von Manstein's out here writing in his journal. It's not my fault. It's, uh, Strategy Gaming Dojo's fault. I was brilliant. Um, boy, that looks rough. I hope these guys don't get hit hard. Uh, we've got to have him here to keep him in command. I guess there's a chance we may get dislocated there. And then the final thing we need to do then is take, uh, this unit or this headquarters, move it up here a little ways, maybe back here on the road. And that is 47th Panzer Corps. Okay. And we'll put this in 47th Panzer Corps. And somewhere Nordhammer smiles as everything comes into command. Uh, he's going directly back to 18th Army. Okay, that works. How's 18th Army looking? 23 of 27. That's not bad. Uh, 9th Army, 20 of 27. I kind of got him back over here, but we'll get those guys where we want them in major towns and whatever else. To the comments I go! Uh... Hey, 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 Nordhammer, you are here. Hey, CJ, what's up? M60's here. Uh, no, I've shoveled a lot of sidewalks in my time. Used to make some extra cash back when I was a youngster uh, doing some of that. Mowing lawns. Uh, I've had a lot of jobs. Uh, put myself through law school, tendon bar at Outback uh, Steakhouse. Now, that's that's exciting stuff. Uh, we could go through a lot more things that I've done in my life. Hey, Milo, what's up? How are you? Um, okay, so I think we've got most everything in command out here. And anything that's not, so we that's in command. These guys are all in command, amazingly. Um, yeah, he goes back there. These guys are all in command, as we see the blue in command. I wish these were in the same. I don't like to have those being in mismatch cores, uh, but I, I screwed that up, and uh, well, what are you going to do? Um, although, hold on, let me see this for a second. He goes back to 23rd. I was just wondering about this, the Totenkopf out here in 42nd. Well, I want to keep all those the same. I was just wondering if I could give more here. Well, Valor's at 9 of 9 as well. Okay, I'm going to move on. I, I I just mainly wanted to get this infantry out here, but then we ended up doing commands. Uh, sure. Uh, these guys are mismatched. That doesn't really need to be the case. This is 39th under Vuthman, who, again, it says it's a Panzer Corps, but he's got all infantry. Um, 39th Panzer or 12th. Well, 12th, I believe, is my guy, Ernst Highway to Hell. Yeah, there he is. He's a, he always got the winter hat on, always ready. Uh, I could put both of these guys in 12th if I wanted to. Some of these guys are going to be on the line, though. Eh, let's give this to the Panzer Corps, uh, 39th. Okay. 39th Panzer Corps, you're in. Let's just make sure 39th Panzer Corps has all the support units we like. Well, he's got four artillery. He's got two mixed flax and a light flak, a stug, two pioneers, machine gun. I like it. Uh, okay, down the line here. Where? Are you, who are you with? Fourth Panzer sitting back here without really any command, but he's also going to go back to the reserves next time, so that's okay. Uh, Hungarians. Looking strong, Hungarians. Be strong. Uh, stay strong. Okay, Luftwaffe field divisions. We got all those in command. We've got all the Hungarians. We fixed that last time. Hungarians here in command. That looks fine. That's good. 11th Corps, you look okay. I already did the depots, so you guys don't have to worry about that. I added a few down here. I can't remember exactly where. Maybe when I see one, I'll remember it. Um, 
I think kind of in this area I added a few depots. May as well get as many out here at four and get them as close to our troops as we can. I wish we had something in this area, but they're not a really good place to put one. We've got this up here, but it didn't get any freight uh, as the Soviets pressure this line. I could put one in Stanislav. Why do we not have one in Stanislav? It's got a level two rail yard. Let's just build one. Uh, we'll make that a three, though. All right, so high priority. Uh, three. So three's back here, four's up at the front. You know, maybe he'll get a little bit and shoot it out here. Maybe maybe it's closer than this. I don't know. Where did this come out of last time? These guys, uh, they got freighted from Chernovsky and a couple from Tarnopol. Sure. What, a, you know, okay, Stanislav built. Uh, back here, I think we had pretty much moved everything we needed to. We got all the remaining cavalry in command. Uh, that That's a game winner right there when you do that. Uh, these guys are on command. That looks good. Uh, we got a bunch of guys on the train back here. We got hodgepodge of crap sitting here in this town. What is this? Bodasani? Sure. Uh, okay. These guys command. Okay, he's way out. He's not commanding anyone. He's sitting here on this rail line. We may get him up there and form up the 17th Army with, you know, other corps. We'll see. Next turn. That's fine. These guys are fine. Uh, 4th Panzer's down here. We've got a Super Depot. Uh, we got some Panzer Divisions on Reserve. Okay, looks good to me. Crimea, uh, we moved some things out of here. Uh, you know, I put them on the boats, and hopefully we've got fewer mouths to feed. We've got third Romanian sitting here. I'm almost tempted to get him out of Sevastopol because I'm afraid he gets the first dibs on any, uh, you know, supply that comes in here. Who else is he? He's just commanding this guy. Does it really matter? Not really. <laughs> Not really, probably, uh, in the grand scheme of things. If we hit on 8 down here, you can see it's all coming out of Sevastopol. Uh, did, did, did this guy... Wow, he's got... Wow, the Italian headquarters has got all the food over here. Well, I'm going to move I'm going to move this guy over here uh, just so he doesn't get first dibs on whatever comes into Sevastopol. Um, and they're going port to port supply. So he'll take some of this, but it's not supplying any of the guys out here. What, do, again, will that make a huge difference? Probably not. Uh, we're up to 25 percent food, 30 percent. Wow. 34 percent. These guys are eating, uh, like I said, old country buffet out here. Uh, Italian. Well, the Italian, that's fine. Uh, pasta is full of calories. Let me tell, let my midsection tell you, uh, 11,000, okay, they got a little bit of food. I'm just trying to feed these guys. Look at this guy, he's hoarding all the fuel. What are they going to try to fly out of here? Uh, 37, wow, look at that. Again, man, some Italians really hoard food. Okay, that all looks fine. I, it's fine. We're just going to, we're going to fly some freight. Let's fly some freight into this depot. We could actually just drop it on their head into this level one, but let's let's fly it in here. Oh, I do not want you staging out of Sevastopol. Can we stage out of Constanta? Does that work? Yeah, we could do that. Perfect. 34,000 tons. I don't think they could even move that much freight. I've got that as a super depot now. Maybe I should move all of my planes down here. Uh, I've got them up here. I should probably move my transports and just fly them out of this level two airfield. Well, it's going to take some air miles to get them down here, but I think it's worth it. Let's go back to move. Let's turn on our air commands. Okay. Let's take transport group Mitte and move them to Constanta. Uh, well, let's do that immediately. All right. And then let's take transport group south. Let's get back on here. Transport group south. Let's also put them in here if we can. If we can't, we you know we've got a lot of airfields back over here, so let's do that. Yep, that works. Immediate. Okay. 
let's just make sure there's no other transport groups out here. I don't, that should, they should all be underneath these two. Uh, and let's see if that helps. All right, let's fly back out here. Do not stage there. Let's stage at Constanta. It's now a direct flight. We do get some JU-52s into the game. Let's do a single mission, make sure the Soviets aren't that active over the airfield. 133 tons. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this until we just run out of freight. Um, we didn't see any resistance. Stop going out of Sevastopol. There we go. Constanta. I may pick up from somebody else. Now, see, we've got things coming from other places, or at least it says they are. But where? Where are you based? Uh, where Can I see it from this screen? No, he's in Transport Group South. He's in Costanta. There it is. Yeah, I can see it. Why? I think these are just because we're playing the first version of the game. I think they're ghost lines. Nope, wrong. Galati. Okay, well, we'll have to go look for Galati. And the Hungarian transport is in Kulevka. Okay, so Kulavka and Galati. Where's Galate? Jimmy Christmas. I don't want to go look for all this stuff. Where are you coming from? Oh, uh, it's six and three planes. You know what? Screw it. I, I, you know, well, I'll move them down there next time. It's fine. I'm not going to hold us up here looking around for, I, I, I know generally where they Galate is the other one. I'm not as familiar with. Okay. 55 tons. Keep going. Keep, keep rolling. 10 tons. That's it. Let's try this again. Costanta. Now, okay, we're out of air miles, at least with our transports. Now, we could fly level bombers out. Where are those trans? Okay, they've already, you can see their air miles here, all the JU 52s, all your transport planes. But these transport planes, Hungarian, well, those are level bombers. So the transport planes go down to here. Where are these guys? Hungarians. Where are you located? Bodasani. Okay. Let's see if we stage out of somewhere else, if we can get more freight out of, over here. So it, again, wants to fly out of Sevastopol. Let's try to fly out of... What is this? Bessarovskaya, obviously. Um, it doesn't come up for us. If I, it is a friendly airbase, folks. Constanta. I mean, how much do they have stored in Sevastopol? I wonder if it would even, it might be worth it to fly it from Sevastopol up here, right? How much do they have stored here? Well, 722, we know that. All right. Um, what happens if we were going to, well, that's a long ways. They're not going to make it all the way from there. Uh, Barlad, Ayasi, can they make it over here? Yeah, we could make it over there. Let's do a single mission first. Oh, it's a launch. There we go. All right. We figured a little more to get over here. 40. Um. Where did that go now? Oh, no. Let's click on that. Ayasi. There it is. Yeah, we never, we didn't run into any problems there, so let's do multiple missions. And now you can see our, some of our other transports are getting up to 100 miles, or 100% of their air miles, I should say. And we got a little bit in here. Well, thank goodness. Now let's see if we try to run to Sevastopol. Can we do it out of something like Bucharest? It's probably way too far. Can we get there? No. This one, I wish this one would pop up. Um, is there not an air? Oh, there's not an airfield there. Well, that that's why. Where's Roman? 
Oh, all the way back here. Well, we can't make it from there. All right, good enough. Uh, I don't think there's any other place to fly f or any place that needs us to fly freight. We could potentially fly some up to this depot. I mean, we're on the rail line, so we should be getting it rail. Uh, most of these guys are close enough back here. I mean, these are within three hexes, so it's just going to be the horsies getting out here and feeding them for the most part. But some of this is also coming from down at Minsk. Wow, some's coming all the way up here from, uh, is that Jagopils? Yeah. Okay, uh, to the comments I go, see if anybody's yelling at me about anything. Yep, not going to stage out of Sevastopol. I agree, I mean, there just doesn't. Um, it is just heavy snow. We don't have pure... Hey, Kalo, how's it going? Hope you're feeling better, my friend. Uh, hey, Wolfner. Mm, I think that's going to do it. The only last thing I wanted to make sure of before we turn the turn... Let's turn the air off. Whoops, turn the air off. Uh, let's make sure there are no depots that are about to get overrun. I did look at the depots. Also, any airfields. This guy is probably okay. End of turn checks. Nothing more uh, exciting than that. Uh, that's okay. No depot there. Where could he overrun a depot? Do we have any other depots? I thought there was one that I was thinking about that could potentially be overrun. Is there a depot at Dogapils? I mean, it doesn't say that there... Yeah, it says we would have to create one. And it wasn't on the map. I mean, obviously that's true as well. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, that's it. Uh, we're turning. Turn and burn. And... Let's scoop back just a little bit. All right, end your turn. Yep, let's do it. I just signed an endorsement deal with Vitamin Water. No, I actually didn't. I just like, I wish, I wish, someday. Oh, you're one, you're down to one arm, Kalo. One good, uh, good swinger, huh? Sorry to hear that. Be curious to see where he hits here. I mean, I, I think a human player would be pushing hard at Minsk. They would be trying to push through to Riga um, and kind of follow up on the many little breakthroughs he's got over there. In the south, I don't know why he's not just hammering away on that line. I mean... You know, the Soviets aren't going to care about manpower, not in 1943, so I think a human player would just pound that southern line. Even if he's taking two-to-one losses, he's quote-unquote winning those uh, in the grand scheme of things. I can't I can't say all this. XTRG's on the line. He's going to know what, what we're up to. Okay, uh, through logistics, AI has not been running much in the way of air. Yeah, see, it says Dogapil's depot is captured. Huh. I, I mean, did I just not just check that? Uh, but it could be we just left behind some supplies. Uh, it's possible. That was the only one I was worried about. It's the only one that we had pulled out of this turn uh, but I, I mean, we disbanded it, but I guess you kind of leave the supplies and fuel on the ground potentially, or at least that's my make-believe wor world. All right, here comes the Soviet air. Let's run 39 sorties, taking 11 losses. We did throw up some fighters. He lost one to air combat, three to flak, and seven operational losses. I don't know. He may be bombing some cities. Now he's up to 58. I mean, it's a very, very limited bombing campaign. 14 losses. Some of it's probably recon as well. Here we go. Come on.
well, there were no weak areas. It's straight to the, the front attacks. And we'll see. It's very the, the AI has been very passive the last couple of turns. Could be saving up. Could be massing somewhere. Could be just being the AI. Uh, we have no way of knowing. All right. He does hit the line in the south. Uh, that's been coming for some time, you would think. But he hits where we're triple stacked, at least. Now, none of these divisions are going to set the world on fire. Uh, but they do hold on. We have 25,000 men between the three. Soviets brought 42 and a half. Uh, he loses 527, so, you know, 10 to 1 almost. He loses a couple of guns and four AFVs. I'll take that hold. We're in a level 3 fort there now. Oh, looky there. So we did get... The 9th Panzer Division did finally get put in or activated while on reserve. So I had moved that 9th Panzer there. Here comes the attack. The Soviets brought 47,000 men. We had 28, 28 and a half or so. But if you look down here, you see the R. 9th Panzer was uh, put into the battle uh, by Nairing. So that's great. Awesome. Uh, we had another Panzer Corps in. They did take a little penalty. That's interesting because they're in the same... No, they're in different corps. That's why. Okay. Uh, we may want to fix that and put, you know, the one on reserve directly behind these guys in the same corps. So when he gets activated, he doesn't get that negative six. Uh, mismatch cores with the infantry, negative 16. But we'll take this result. 86 losses, two AFVs, 664 the Soviets. Uh, nine AFEs, and he lost, you know, some planes to boot. So he's hitting that southern line. I think the AI heard me. Okay, uh, now we have, look at that. We have another Panzer Division that activated in reserve. So we had Viking motorized here, um, and 17th Panzer was right behind him. You can see the R. Freder Pico put him into the battle, uh, 17th Panzer. We only lose two AFVs. The Soviets, eh, they take a little more losses than we do. Not as good a result as you'd like for one to four, but we held, which is the important part. Then they try to hit there again. This time, Fred or Pico says we don't even need the help from the Panzers, and we rebuff that attack as well. Okay, what do we got going on here? One to 6.1. We hold very, okay, so he's around this group right here on three sides. Uh, we do not activate, or Daring does not activate the Panzer Division this time. Instead, 36th Motorized and 57th Infantry, he says, I'm going to leave you to your own devices, and they hold strongly, 191 to 52, two on the guns, three on the AFVs. So down here in the south, we're holding on. They attack into the triple stack of infantry again, 66 to 209, but we hold Again, he's tacking into a level 3 fort. Uh, I'd love it if he does that all day. Now we're up here in, uh, on the Romanian border. We stand uh, 16th Panzers out here, okay, along with 17th Infantry. So, again, I'd said it before. I never, ever, on a, in a defensive setting, like to have Panzers on their own. I like to stack them with an infantry or a motorized because they'll absorb the losses first, right? I mean, it only makes sense if you think about how a real battle would be, right? The tanks would be behind these guys, uh, generally speaking, if they're on the defensive. Uh, we're into a level three fort there. Uh, we take 44 infantry losses, 315 for the Soviets, and we hold. And hold very well. You can see we're starting to build the fort levels all along here. And it's making a huge difference this time. 300 to 173. We hold on there. Okay. This is... I forget which little town this is. Just south of Tarnopol. I just forget what it is off the top of my head. Uh, we are in a level one fort there. Uh, we have a 121 on the adjusted. They put it through the blender, gave the Soviets 51. It's 1 to 2.3. Well, there wasn't a whole lot going on there. Uh, Soviets take two, we take 20. But he's getting around us four directions there. You really want to try to avoid that. So we're going to have to, you know, 
settle that a bit. Uh, 19 to 123, we hold strongly there. Now, see, this is what happens when you actually have fort levels. Uh, it becomes very difficult to attack you. Oh, we got a little breakthrough towards Minsk. Hold on. Uh, 355, we, we hold there, but he's broken through with a tank core. So, you know, good job, Romanians. Uh, meanwhile, I didn't see what happened there, but we get attacked into the triple stack here. These guys are not strong, but they're triple stacked. We've got 30,000 troops. He's got 11,000. Not often nowadays we outnumber them uh, 38 or 58 to 20. So we hold well enough there. Now, this is up north of Minsk as he's trying to get another tank core through into our soft underbelly. But we hold on. Then they hit the triple stack again. Usually those second and third attacks uh, lack a little steam, and they certainly did there. Okay, well, that didn't work out perfectly. Now, you may remember I moved that infantry up here to stack with the panzers because I didn't want them to be all alone. Well, it didn't matter. Um, he brought 9.8 to 1. 91,000 troops showed up on the battlefield, uh, including 1,150 artillery pieces. He loses 11 AFEs. We lose 34. Now, that Panzer Division didn't have great Panzers left, uh, so it's not quite as bad as it seems there. We lose 44 guns, 1,000 men, 1,050. He lost 1,550. So, you know, we did okay given how, how badly we were outnumbered. But uh, that's the power of the Soviets. And you can see he's brought in a tank core. So he really broke through with the tank cores here, or at least he's trying to. Now they're coming back into us here. Uh, this stack that we attacked with that has Totenkopf in it, 102nd Infantry, 370th Infantry, just south of Peskov. They try to hit us there. 1 to 2.2. We're in a level 2 fort. That certainly helped. 289, 357 on the adjusted. Um, and you can see, I'm glad that I kept these all in the same command because Stemmerman, you know, they don't take a penalty and he threw in four support units, including three of the artillery and one of the rockets. So we hold on strong there. They attack just south of there and take a beating there, 461 to 161. Uh, but he lost a thousand men in that attack. Uh, oh, he's pushing one of these little rocket brigades through. I'm not sure why the AI would do that, really. But we we hold strong there. We hold strong just south of there. A lot of forces massing for the push on Riga. Uh, we hold there again. 1195 big losses he took there. 270 to 285. Pretty even battle. Got to keep that hex in mind. But now he's also moved cavalry through this. Good thing we're bringing armor this way. Uh, we win this battle. We hold strong in that hex again, level 2 fort. Yeah, they just absolutely blew something out of here. Wow. Wow. That was one of the brand new divisions that we had, the 304th, but they brought 112,000 men in their push for Minsk. We've got a problem there now uh, because that unit, I was counting on holding that. Uh, I mean, we've got Hungarians here. We got a big problem near Minsk. 1077 to 941. We were only in a level one fort. He got an adjusted of 309. We were at 47. Uh, we must have missed some a dice roll or two out here under Hubei, which is kind of surprising because he's a good general, but that that's a bad situation. We're going to have to bring a lot down here. Now, I think we can hold it uh, or at least push back on it, but when he's bringing 112,000 men like that, uh, that's a bigger problem than I thought we had there. Uh we hold here in a level two fort. The Hungarians are out here. They're like, well, we're holding our ground. Uh, and they hold here as well. Okay. I mean, now we do have some Germans in those groups as well. And that's it. Well, the big problem ended up being around Minsk, which is not where I expected it. Certainly. Um, 
That is a lot of men by Minsk. <laughs> yeah, it is. Just in that one stack to have 112,000, and he and he broke a tank core through there and a mech core. So we've got uh, we got some things to do there. Where'd my game go? This thing just crashed. Where are you? God, let's hope not. Oh, I'm getting the blue spinning wheel. It says it's not responding, but I don't think we crashed. God, I hope not. That's going to be a disaster. Hey, we're back. <laughs> That's the great thing about playing the beta version. Uh, you never know. It's always a dice roll. How many men took part in a large British-American battle, Paul? Well, I mean, I don't know. Were you talking Revolutionary War, Paul? Uh, or are we talking on the Western Front? Yeah, well, that's the first time we've gotten a black screen, I think, in this game. Maybe maybe early on we did a little bit. Uh, it's been a while. It was enough to, you know, make me pucker. Uh... But we're back. We're back. Okay, through our logistics phase we go. You can see there was a tank core that busted uh, through here south of Dogopels, which is right there. Um, well, like I keep saying, we got a lot of stuff retreating, so you know, we'll throw it into the fray. We also get four new divisions. Well, not new. We get two new divisions and two rebuilt divisions this time. So, I mean, some of that's going to have to go to protect Riga. When I say some of that, one or two. It looks like one or two are going to be heading towards Minsk now. I really wanted some of it to go to the south. But we should be bringing two divisions out after being rebuilt each time assuming they kind of rebuild at the same speed these first two did now that may be optimistic we may only get one or two but we'll be putting two on refit each time um it is now january 31st 1943 Doo -doo 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 -doo. breaking news what's going on in the world well there are soviet partisans that's it all right well that wasn't very exciting Thought, well, that's probably a good thing. Usually nowadays, that's uh, the Allies bombing our factories and whatnot. So that's okay. Uh, let's go look at reinforcements. What's actually coming on the map this time? We get the Kempf Detach... Uh, what is D-E-T? I'm not sure. Uh, we get these guys coming to the map. And now 17170 is Warsaw. That is where we have our replacements out of the reserves come in. And then back by Berlin is where the new units come in. Uh, so we've got four full divisions. Looks like we have more than that. 26th, 7th. Oh, we got a Panzer division as well. So we've got a brand new Panzer division, two infantry divisions there. We've got two infantry divisions back by Berlin that can get out here. The 333rd and the 335th. If we zoom, let's get the air off here. If we zoom down on Minsk, ay, 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 uh, all right, we do have this division did, uh, this is the one that got routed. That really surprised me. I mean, that was a brand new fresh division, but 112,000, ooh, look at that, artillery division in here. Um, that's why he had 1,100 guns or so. Holy mackerel. Uh, Rightio then. Uh, this did reform itself. It's no longer routed. He was right next to his commander. Uh, obviously, Hubei passed a dice roll or two, and these guys are back in the action. What does it say? Our TOE 65. Okay, well, that's not, that's not terrible, given the state we've been in before. It looks like this Panzer Division rebuilt a little bit. A little bit. Now, he was in bad, bad shape. Mainly, this was just men that came in here, right? Um, Narvaline. Looks like he's massing a little bit more here, but it's nothing. It's not red alert there yet. Attacks here. Now, he's all four ways around Peskov, and he's got some real strength here. This is a huge problem, because now that he's four times around... 
it's going to be hard to hold that. I mean, we may be in a situation where before the check, we're trying to counterattack to get back into Peskov. Uh, certainly don't want that, but don't worry. He's also headed towards Riga as a backup plan, and he's just swamping us with counters. You know, I mean, it was just too many men. Now, luckily, we've got a lot coming back, but he's also pushed through here a little bit with what looks like some strength. So we got a problem there. We got a problem there. We got a problem up here. This is going to be fun. Uh, we've got a, a huge problem there. Um, this tank core, there, it's showing it as a three on offense and defense. I assume it's more than that. This mech unit looks tough, and he's got guns for days there. And I'm not talking about working out in the gym. Uh, Hungarians... I mean, that's the least of our worries now, and that's really saying something. Down here, the South held really well, but we're now we're getting into big-time fort level. Big-time fort levels. We got some threes along here, some twos. So the South actually surprisingly looks better than a lot of uh, the other parts. Of the oh, let's go and look. Yeah, let's look at we'll look at the reserve box. Let's also look at these guys out here. Uh, did they get any more food? Well, the mountain division, the Romanians hogged it all. There, the Ital well, the Italians are going to eat well. Of course, they are. Twenty-five and forty. These guys need to get the hell out of here. I am going to sail that other division over here, the one that's had a couple of turns to rebuild and try to get some of this other stuff out of here. Uh, these guys look halfway decent. Uh, the third mountain division's up to 58%. All right. Rats on spits out here. Uh, 45, 44, 40. That all looks okay. I'm sure. You know, the headquarters, of course, these guys got their food. You know, they did. Uh, they've got escargot out here on the Crimea. Um, What else? Okay, we'll look at the reserve box really quickly, and we'll see if those two divisions rebuilt for us. The two that we put on refit. Uh, yeah, 35th, 97. What's the other one that I did? Yeah, 50th, 98. So the two that we had on refit this time, almost completely built, uh, rebuilt. So then next time we'll put 76th, and 121st, and we'll rebuild those two and just do two and two and two and two uh, on refit because it looks like on refit we can rebuild two divisions every turn. Uh, it's getting the priority. That's great. Uh, headquarters units, ah, who cares? Uh, 13th Panzer is up to 85. We can move that back on the map this time. Well, shit, let's just do it. Why not? Let's put that on the map. Let's put uh, 50th on the map. And 35th on the map. Now, see, in a well-structured game, you would be doing this throughout November, December, January, and February, where you put guys back in the reserves, you rebuild kind of two at a time to put back out on the map. We've been on such a scramble since our tries at Rezhev and Stolino that we didn't really have a chance to. But now a lot's coming back here, and we're getting some of it rebuilt, so that's good. Uh, let's put this on refit. So 76th. Put him refit on. Make sure it is. Yep, refits on. And 121st. Let's put refit on there. Look at that. Refit on. I don't. I'm not going to do a third one. I guess it's possible we could rebuild a third one, but I want enough flowing out to the map as well. So we've got four new on the map or newer rebuilt on the map this time. Next time we'll get two more. If we look at the grand situation, uh, he's bulging. He's bulging. This looks like kind of a pregnant woman there. Um, yep, but really, I'm not as worried about this. We're holding. Now, it could be at some point he's just massing here, but we've been holding okay here. But the, all of this in this area, now luckily that's where we've got a lot of units uh, that we can try to disperse. 
I think our whole idea of trying to run down here and doing some kind of encirclement, that may have been lost in the ash heap of that Panzer division that got, you know, smoked back up here. But we'll take a look at it. We're going to do all of that. I'm not mad at you, Nordhammer, for God's sakes, man. Uh, no, I'm not mad. I'm, I'm glad that you point those things out. Uh, some, the only time I ever, you know, say anything is when, uh, when I, I am aware of it. Uh, but I, I, in fairness, I did forget to put those couple of mech units, uh, in command last time. Um, we're going to come back tomorrow, 10 AM Pacific coast time. And we're going to try to figure out what, you know, we don't really have to worry about the air right now. So, you know, it's going to be straight back on the ground. And we got a lot of work to do up and around Peskov. So we'll see. We'll see. Can we, can we hold on? I don't know. I don't know if you're rooting for me or against me now. Uh, it'd probably be more fun to watch me play the Soviets against XTRG uh, than playing uh, the, this out. But uh, I, I'll never give up. I still think we're going to win. Uh, I'm going to keep it that. I'm going to keep it that uh, upbeat. So anyway. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put another Distant Worlds video up, and I'm working on War in the Pacific. Every one of those damn turns takes three hours. So anyway, you guys have a great night. Have a great start to your weekend. I'll see you again tomorrow morning, and uh, you all be safe and good out there. I know how crazy most of you are. Uh, lay off the scotch, but have a drink for me. Pour one on.